All right, we are live. What's up, everybody? Steven here, the Horror Freak 85. And of course, Echo <laughs> here. Ah, uh, cha, cha. Yeah, can't forget. <laughs> <laughs> cha, cha, cha. <laughs> oh, God, I, I'm not going to be living that down, am I? No. Oh, wait, wasn't it? Cha. <laughs> yeah, I can go cha, cha, cha. Act like I'm all more snobby. Like, cha, cha, yeah. cha. Well, we got our first guest popping up here. Hello, hello. Hey, how you doing? Long time no see. Yes, it's been a while. And here we go. <laughs> Number two. Hello. How's it going? It is going. How's your week been, guys? Mostly okay. Just pushing, you know, this Kickstarter as hard as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen that. And I got the link posted. Um, and I'll put it on this uh, video also afterwards. So we'll try to get some more uh, sucker. I mean, contributors out there. <laughs> get these marks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, on the Kickstarter, uh, what are some of the perks you got on there? The Blu-ray and what else you got on there? Yeah. So, you know, obviously the, the Kickstarter is for our new film idea, Curtains for Christmas. It is a wonderful idea that Aline had which is about a woman that absolutely loves Christmas romantic comedies and decides through the fact that she's a homicidal maniac that she will force her life to be a romantic comedy, which will include a lot of murder and kidnapping. Uh, the effects budget for this one is the biggest we have so far on all of our, any, any of our films, so hopefully we can reach that and make the movie we are envisioning. The, the perks that we have include, obviously, a digital link, DVD, Blu-ray, the simple stuff, all, and then the next steps we have stuff like you know, get your get a special thanks in the credits. You know, if you want to get your name in the credits, really help us a little bit more. We have, <clears throat> we're going to be doing greeting cards. We're going to be doing Christmas cards from Holly and Jay in the film, uh, where he looks terrified and she's looking great. Uh, so those will be signed and hand numbered, and they are a Kickstarter exclusive. We're only going to make however many get pre-ordered. Um, we're going to have a special Kickstarter exclusive Blu-ray cover, which isn't going to be anything amazing, but it is going to be uh, a unique exclusive art that's going to be horizontal so that you can pose the case as if it's a greeting card from Christmas time. Um, you should make it where you can open it up and set it down like a greeting exactly. card. Exactly, yeah. That's the point, yeah. Um, the We have a one of one. We are selling the hot dog suit from Carousel 2 and 3, screen used, worn by Mark McConnell Jr. and Paul Pretty Boy Smooth Bilbo in Carousel 2 and Carousel 3, respectfully. Uh, so if you're want, if you a big Carousel fan and you want a piece of Carousel history, this is your one shot to get that. We may be putting up some more props. I don't know. If you folks want anything specific, reach out to us and let us know. Maybe we can work something out. We'll pretty much, we're open to anything except for selling Duke or Usagi or Robbie. Uh, but we have a lot of props. How um, about the and, pizza cutter that cut your mm -hmm. face? <laughs> Uh, that is, I mean, I'll buy pizza cutter and say it's the one that cut my face. Uh, I don't know where that original one is. You can um, have, have multiple ones. Which yeah. one's the real one? Hmm. Um, and then, of course, we have the executive producer credit. If you want to put that on your business card and use that to meet women, you know, like, hey, baby, I make movies or meet men. I don't care. Uh, just give us money. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we do have a couple spots open. We came up with a great sequence. Uh, where we see Holly kill a couple of her ex-boyfriends. So we do have a couple die in the movie perks opened up to hopefully try to get us over that finish line, but we'll see. Okay, nice. So yeah, if anybody wants to die in it, there you go. <laughs> That's a good one. So, And I'm sure there's some crazy deaths you guys got in mind, I'm sure. <laughs> we have some absolutely over-the-top, very gory death ideas for this one. Wait, this is goes beyond a lot of what we did for the carousel movies like not every kill right. uh, but uh we made sure that each kill in this does more than some of the individual kills in the carousels we wanted each one to be memorable for different reasons mm -hmm. yeah i saw that on the kickstarter site people can check out a little teaser to it there so it looks pretty good. yes there was a teaser trailer on there check it out if it if it's up your if it's your cup of tea Please mm -hmm. consider pre-ordering the film and supporting us. You know, if, if you are a fan of Carousel, if you know what movies we've made before, the best way to describe it using our own library is it is Carousel 1 and Amityville Christmas Vacation combined. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. 
So um, where did the idea come from for this one? Aline, you want to take this? Um, yeah, I mean, I throw about 300 ideas at Steve every week, and most of them never get made. But once in a while, one really sticks. The last one before this was Carousel, obviously. And uh, Curtains for Christmas. I don't know. We were talking, we were watching our annual watch of all of the not garbage, because you know some of them are great, but the mix of Christmas rom-coms that are widely available on streaming. And um, I think I pitched about five or six different concepts over the Christmas season. And finally, this one just stuck. I just, I love a strong female villain. Um, I think the concept of having the main character be forcing everything to happen through kidnapping and violence is a little, is refreshing. We have a lot of horror films where, you know, Santa is causing violence or uh, someone who hates Christmas is causing violence. But now we have someone who's very passionate about the holiday, passionate about her Christmas love story, just using violence as a means to an end, to a happy ending. Uh, and then curtains for Christmas. I literally had to Google a bunch of times to make sure it hasn't been done because you know, there's shoelaces for Christmas, oranges for Christmas, a dog yeah. for Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's a title uh, pattern that emerged when we were watching all these movies. And I was just like, curtains for Christmas. She'll be shopping for curtains and people will get curtains. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I finally sold them on it. So hooray. That, that, that kind of reminds me of what they did with Friday the 13th when they put an ad out just to test to see whether or not mm -hmm. they can do it. Yeah, just to see the reaction based on just the name. Man, yeah. those were the days, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Good times, good times. <laughs> bring them back. Well, you know, we just need to bring everything back. Hey, heck, no, no, there's a few people trying out there. Every now and then you can come across a, a modern movie and be like, oh, this kind of feels like those movies. There's a few out there. Mm-hmm. I'm doing my part. <laughs> so, yeah, like when you were coming up with that title and you said you were researching it, like you were hoping that it wasn't taken, like that was what you had in mind for the title originally? There was it like other ones you were playing with? <laughs> for the most part, and I'll, sorry, you can take it after I say this, Aline. I didn't mean to cut you off. But uh, for the most part, all of my scripts slash our scripts, we come up with the title first. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of uh, dictates the tone of the entire story and screenplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely the first title I tried for this one. I didn't workshop anything else. Uh, and when Google and other searches only brought up actual curtains, like with Christmas <laughs> patterns on them for your house, and knew that we had a winner. Um, and nothing else really had that dual play, that dual word play that I really wanted. So I'm glad that it was available. I've pitched him a bunch of Christmassy ideas, uh, like some Wally Griswold stuff from the Meowie movies, but this is the first one where, like, we were sold immediately. Mm. Nice. I gotta say the the, the, the title, I, I like the sound of it. it. Sounds like it just roll right off the tongue. Curtains for Christmas. I like the sound of it. And multiple meanings, it works out great for it. So. Absolutely, yeah. We love you know double meaning titles and jokes and gags with that. Mm -hmm. So any of like speaking of like jokes like that any like uh breaking the third wall jokes in this one or uh not too directly what we do do is that there is a so you know she loved holly loves christmas rom-coms in the film so in the film we see her watching her favorite christmas rom-com in three different scenes which is a reference to and parody of my meowie movies so the movie in the movie is a cheesy Christmas, which is about two talking rats getting each of their, you know, people together. Hmm. Uh, so I think that's the closest thing to a like a fourth wall reference. The fourth there, wall, and then, yeah. There isn't yeah. anything to like. There's no look at the camera and wink. Right. Um, right. Uh, but there's you know I like to lean on the fourth wall from time to time for gags. There is a there's a conscience character that Holly has that I don't want to spoil yet. Uh, but he's hilarious. He keeps popping up. Only Holly can see him because he is her subconscious. He's her, you know, Jiminy Cricket telling her, like, hey, I think you're taking this a bit too far most of the time. Um, but I, there is a great bit where she falls asleep from exhaustion and he's still there and he just sits silently for a moment and looks at his hands and tries to understand his own existence. Now he's still there when she's asleep. 
And I saw that um, Jessa Flux has been cast in it. Anyone else we might uh, recognize? Uh, I, I don't cast my movies for the most part until I'm sure they're happening. I, I know a lot of guys do that early. You know, that's how they use it to push the Kickstarter. And maybe I'm an idiot and I should do it that way too. But I hate wasting people's time unless I'm absolutely sure that I'm making the movie. Uh, so as of right now, the only folks that are cast in the film is myself, Aline Isley, and Jessa Flux, uh, whose time I'm not wasting because she loves us. Uh, yeah, she, she kind of reached out when she saw the movie announcement. It was like, can I audition? Uh, when Jessa asks you to audition for your film, you just drop everything and you send her some audition sides because she's such a joy to work with. Uh, she's hilarious on set. She knows her shit. Like she shows up studied and ready to go. And she's a good actress. Like I know a lot of people like to use her for, you know, her looks and her, her other talents, but like, really she's very talented and I'm really excited to see what she does in this movie with us. Yeah, she is. And she does a lot, too. And I know she's been trying to do like a movie a month and everything. Yes. So, yeah, she's she's busy, busy. So which I'm actually going to see her next week. So awesome. <laughs> yes. Cheerleader hopefully, elimination. <laughs> and next. Hopefully you can talk to her about how successful the curtains for Christmas Kickstarter was. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll bring up so curtains uh, for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she, I mean, she is playing uh, one of the leads of the film, obviously. Um, so again, Holly is kidnapping people to try to make her perfect Christmas. So she doesn't have a family, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and she needs that perfect Christmas Eve dinner like all these movies have. So she breaks into someone's home and makes those people her parents. And then it's like, oh, you don't have kids? Damn it, I need siblings. Like, we have to keep the ratio correct. So then she goes and kidnaps two burglars. Uh, knocks them out and then forces them to be her siblings. And Jessa is definitely the the much more sarcastic one. Like, the threat is real for all these people, and they believe that, and they're scared of her, but Jessa is playing the character that is far more... I'm going to have fun with this. Like, we're, we talked a little bit that we may have Jessa do a transatlantic accent when she's pretending to be Holly's uh, sister. Uh, I don't know if we're going that far, but I make live-action cartoons, so I think I'm going to go that far. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can just imagine her. She can pull that off, I'm sure. That oh, would yeah. Be so. She can pull off all, almost anything. Like, she is honestly one of the most talented people that we have worked with. You know, so long as we can keep affording her, uh, we will always bring her back as much as possible. Nice. All right. Um, how long did it take you to write this script? This one didn't take too long. Like, uh, I write very fast, though. I write very fast. Uh, we came up with the outline together in, what, a couple days, Celine? Yeah, I think uh, the initial brainstorming process was maybe like two days, three days. And then I got really, really busy. So he actually got to writing a lot of the script while I wasn't home. And then I would come back uh, from rehearsals and things for shows. And he'd have like a whole scene written for me. So we would sit and read through the scene and make updates and things like that. Uh, that's kind of how we work. Like he does the bulk of the writing and then we kind of go through it together, see what fits, what needs shortened. Uh, and that, I don't know, that took you not very long, I would say. Two weeks tops. So, obviously you work great together, but has there ever been a time that you clashed with anything? Like, nah, I did that and one of you wanted it and the other is like, nah. Uh, one thing was Aline, Aline, and we didn't really clash, uh, but Aline's idea was that this was going to be Holly's first murder, and like in this movie. And my argument was just more so, um, and this has come up in like a couple other conversations. We're just like, if this is the first time Holly starts killing, then we'd have to deal with Holly dealing with that, uh, and that's a bit too real for what I want this comedy horror to be. Uh, and also that way it's just easier for her to start killing when this is not the first time she's been doing this. Uh, I think that was the main thing. Anything else come to mind, Elaine? I don't think on this project in particular, we've had other things where, you know, we've had discussions like, I remember one was naming Robbie in the Karis Hell series between myself, Steve and our cinematographer. Uh, we went around in circles on what the name for Robbie was going to be for probably a few weeks during the writing process. But generally we get along really well. We work well on set together. Uh, we haven't gotten tired of each other yet. And it's been like 12 years of working on movies. So hopefully we're all here to stay partnered up. 
yeah. Sometimes I get to the uh, end of my rope and I start yelling a little bit, but it is with love. I <laughs> yeah. always apologize <laughs> and like acknowledge that I was out of line. But it's about dumb stuff. It's not like anything major. Like in Carousel 3, I said, hey, Aline, uh, you, can you hold Usagi the rabbit in front of the chair? And she started going behind the chair. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I said in front of the chair, not behind the chair. Um, stuff like that. Uh, my favorite <laughs> on set uh, story about us working together is and being together is that uh, on Shingles, one of the actors didn't know that we were together, like we're married. And so I guess we were on set and Steve like pat my butt or something in front of him. And he was like all offended. He's like, you just going to let him do that to you? That's like, how I got the job. That's my husband. <laughs> like, I'm cool with it, man. So I like, know this. Uh, we don't keep it a secret. We don't hide that we're married, but we also don't sit there and announce it because it's better for business if, you know, people uh, want to imagine that either of us is available. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've had people message um, one of our old YouTube movies or videos, one of my old YouTube videos, like, hey, are you guys dating or something? And I'm like, yeah, dude, we've been married for like eight years. We're a little late. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's when you should have replied no. Well, you know, given that this, you know, it was a Christmas movie, do you have any your particular favorite uh, Christmas rom-com that you guys like? Uh, rom-com specifically, I'd have to think about it. Like, I got to go to top three Christmas movies. But when it comes to rom-com specifically, uh, I don't, I'm not ready. With Surviving an answer. Christmas? I watch a lot of, it might be Surviving Christmas, honestly, because uh, that's the one I go back to specifically as a rom-com every year. I connect a lot with the Ben Affleck character in that and not having a lot of good Christmases growing up and wanting to make a good Christmas. Huh, go figure, like Holly is making one. Um, so that might be my answer, but like I just love the genre. Like I don't watch Christmas rom-coms every year, ironically. I'm watching them because I'm enjoying them. And they aren't all good, uh, but it's honestly rare for me to like watch one that I actively say, this is bad. Like this is boring and the characters aren't interesting and the shots aren't interesting and the pacing is bad and the story's bad. Most of them I'm, I'm in the groove of being like, hell yeah, I know exactly the tropes we're getting. I know exactly what we're going to be doing today. Comfort food, baby. What about you, Elaine? Do you have a favorite Christmas rom-com? I mean, I really enjoy surviving Christmas. I love the salami scene more than anything in life when we're watching rom-coms. But I also really enjoyed uh, the one with, was it Freddie Prince Jr. We watched Christmas with you like last year. It was yes. brand new. Yes. And it's like a Latino pop star and him get together. It's It was cute. It was a little bit higher budget than some of the ones you see on streaming. I just, I liked the story. I thought it was great. And partially written by the man we've worked with multiple times, Michael Varadi. And what was that one called again? You said uh, Christmas with you or Christmas without you. We forget because in the movie, the title of the song is the other one. Okay. But it was, it was a Netflix original. So it was like specifically on Netflix. Christmas with you. I just did a Google confirm cool. for you. Yeah. I was going to mix up. Well, I got family guy with periods. Hey, I said the title in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they do. I, I love when that happens. It's one of my favorite gags. Yeah, one of our traditions is making fake air horn sounds whenever we hear titles in movies. So, like, that's that's definitely a favorite trope. We <laughs> drop it twice in curtains. Okay. Gotta, gotta throw it in there. <laughs> <laughs> we The joke is that we use it for both meanings. I was proud of that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, originally, Never Back Down was going to be called Get Some. And there's, like, one part where he's funny, he's like, Get some, and we're like, he said the name of the movie, <laughs> but of course they changed it. Of course, yeah, yeah, you know, they always change it pretty much. I hate when they do that. Like, do you think one thing's gonna be that? But also, I guess because you know they didn't want the title getting out at the time too, or whatever. They always, or not always, but you know how it is. Sometimes it can be anything. Titles. Yeah, yeah, just uh, keep it under wraps, whatever. <laughs> so, oh, uh, let's see what else. Uh, what Christmas music do you like listening to? Uh, it is my favorite genre of music. I listen to it all year round. Um, my favorite Christmas song is um, the Christmas song. Some know it as Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, but the mm -hmm. title is a Chris the Christmas song by Nat King Cole specifically. The way he sings mm -hmm. it is just like, that's the flavor of Christmas for my ears. 
Uh, second place is Fuck You If You Don't Like Christmas, performed by Cred Bump. <laughs> uh, you can look that up on YouTube and enjoy that. It is a wonderful song. I'm going to have to check that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just a lovely holiday title. Fuck You exists. If You Don't Like It. <laughs> have a merry fucking Christmas, why don't you? <laughs> uh, how about you, Ellie? <laughs> Uh, I like a mix of oldies and new stuff. Uh, for more modern song remixes, I really like the Pentatonics Christmas albums. Their acapella stuff is amazing. Not a big person to listen to a lot of the religious tracks, though, but I'll still pop on anything they play. My favorite classic song is Let It Snow. I love that song so much. And, um, oh, I was just thinking, we've been really into Sia's album lately, too. Sia's Christmas album, The Snowman. Uh, we, we found her uh, claymation music videos that go with that album, and they're just so cute and heartwarming. So it's been really fun enjoying that this year. Have you, ever, like listened, have you ever listened to uh, Siberian, was it the Siberian Light Orchestra's Christmas album? The albums? Trans-Siberian Orchestra? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, they're classics. But I mean, brother, that's the great thing about Christmas yeah. music is that it's like every genre is Christmas music. Like Christmas in the Hollis is a fantastic song, you know, and that's rap. You know, it, there's rock Christmas, there's rap Christmas, there's classical Christmas, there's pop Christmas. Uh, it's fantastic. There's death metal Christmas. Mm -hmm. The the you, the um the Tales from the Crypt Christmas album is my right. loophole at Halloween time because I'm not allowed to listen to Christmas music in October. But it's just like, no, this is Tales from the Crypt. This is just a horror album, honey. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good loophole. There. <laughs> I had a major <laughs> habit this season too. I was watching a ton of the um, orchestra videos. Everybody that plays Sleigh Ride, I love to see how they do the whip crack and it's become sort of a memeable video moment for, or viral video moment for them. So it's always fun for me to Google different or, uh, orchestras. Like in one, they had a person pretend to be an audience member that like stole the whip cracky thing and then he was running around the whole time and every time it would come up in the song, you get the crack and then he gets chased again. Like things like that really entertain me. And it was a really popular thing this season. So, yeah, I love Sleigh Ride, too. That's a good classic. Yeah. I remember seeing a short for that. And they're like, this guy has the greatest job, and he only has to work one day a year. And you just see him standing with it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much you get paid for that. Like, <laughs> It's $60,000 a year. It's salary. It really worked oh, out. Okay. <laughs> well, apparently you looked that up. Okay. <laughs> No, I'm just that kidding. was your that know. was a career that you thought of getting into if the movies didn't work, right? I just I got I lost it. So wasn't able to get it. You got out whipped, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so would you ever consider uh writing your own Christmas song? Something I I'm not good enough to write music. Mm -hmm. Uh there is this one idea that uh Bill Murphy and I have toyed around with that we may make one day. And I pitched he had a great idea. Um and I pitched making it a musical just so we can market it in a different way and i don't want to explain why but if i if i make the movie exactly as he says i don't know if there's a good way to market it because either i have to do these fake deaths so that the twist doesn't get given away or i have to do the real deaths which means the twist will be assumed before we get to those real deaths so i was like what if we make it a, a musical for the first two acts and if i do that i'm hiring someone like i'm gonna probably work with mike Treblecock uh to do the music for that because he writes for musicals he's done that before um and i work with aline obviously because she does musicals like that's her bread and butter so i wouldn't write a christmas song but that's because of talent not because of lack of interest mm -hmm. yeah. i am dying for us to shoot a musical like please for the love mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like i like musicals but i can't sing so it's like uh yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, if you saw our Gabrielle Pizzola show when she went to a <laughs> never ending story, I'm like, no. Oh, I'm God. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> she, she started singing and just like, sing with me. It's like, oh, God, no. Oh, <laughs> God. No. It's like, no, wait, we don't want to ruin your great singing, please. <laughs> End up on some compilation on, on YouTube. Worst singers ever. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I'm not like those deluded ones where they're on the show, like, oh, I'm a great singer. Oh, yeah, everybody mm -hmm, says mm -hmm. so. And then they're like, horrible it's like it's like my mom says i'm good <laughs> uh, yeah <it's> just, yeah <laughs> my grandma uh, said i was handsome <laughs> like uh, uh wrong being encouraged there it's like it's nice to be encouraged but not lied to <laughs> yes <laughs> so you don't look like a fool <laughs> like i wish i could sing but oh well i think a little late for that i don't think i would 
if well, you start it's, vocal it's, training, like that's yeah. not something necessarily that you're born with. So yeah. you, if you really want to, you could start paying for singing lessons and maybe get there. <laughs> yeah. So that way I could do yeah. both. I can do it, so. A large yeah, portion of singing is muscle memory. So, you know, teaching yourself where to feel where the notes are. So you mm -hmm. could start anytime. And I could always do that app where it changes your voice. It makes you yeah. sound like you're not awesome. You can, no, I'm just kidding. I you just auto-tune it instead. Or auto-tune the whole album. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do, uh, I think, what was it? To do what they did for the second Grease movie. And just have someone, you know, sing for you and lip sync. Oh, yeah. If I were in the musical horror movie as a role, I'm getting someone to sing for well, me because I, I can't I, sing. I did uh, Cinderella and it was high school, and uh, I was just lip singing to the part. It was funny. My dance partner, I'm singing the song, and she's like trying not to laugh. She gets off stage. She's like, every freaking time, she's like, I'm trying not to laugh. You look so like, <laughs> <singing> <laughs> uh, Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other Christmas. Uh, let's see. You watch your movies. Any other uh, fun Christmas traditions you like doing? Uh, we are up to 11 trees in the house. Uh, they two of them are Halloween trees, so they go up in September, and then I start putting up the rest in November. With the final tree always being the 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 real tree, the live tree that I always get on Black Friday. I always get it the day after Thanksgiving, um, and set it up while we watch Christmas Vacation. Do you ever do any of those? Like, uh, cause some people get pretty creative with how they do the trees. I've seen hang them from the ceiling, or that like someone did a a portal one where they cut the tree in half. And they act like it's teleporting through the ground and the other half's hanging from somewhere else. We don't get that creative, uh, but they all, all the trees except for the real one do have a theme though. Uh, upstairs in the hallway, we got the one Halloween tree, which is all pumpkins uh, next to the candy Christmas tree. So it's like all treats and like Hershey bar ornaments and like M&M ornaments, that sort of thing. Then in the living room, we've got the real tree, which is kind of our, it's our life, you know, it's like a bunch of pieces of all of our lives. And then also a small burb tree. So it's just a small four foot tree covered in all birds. Um, in the dining room, uh, we have Aline's ocean tree, which is a teal blue tree covered in like mermaids, starfish, uh, a starfish painted as Santa Claus, which is my favorite. Um, behind Aline is where the main Halloween tree usually goes. And that's covered in all the Halloween ornaments, you know, Night Before Christmas, Haunted Mansion, spooky stuff. Uh, the front porch of my house has the Santa Claus tree. So it's a six foot tall tree covered in only Santa Claus ornaments. Uh, the back porch has a three and a half foot tree that my father and I stole from a bank when I was a child. Uh, and that's just the red and green. That's the red and green tree, like the classic red and green ornaments, just or, just ball ornaments. And then in the basement is the blue and silver tree, uh, which is the one down there. And that's also simple, like just orbs, blue and silver ornaments for the most part, a couple snowflakes. Uh, so that's what we do. <laughs> um, since you mentioned Nightmare Before Christmas, now Halloween or Christmas movie, what do you classify it as? Do you want to answer first, Lane? Because this is your movie. That's Jack. I, I can see I mean, Jack. Jack's hanging out behind me because I forgot to take him down this year. Um, but uh, I, I always say Por qué no los dos. Like, why not? Why can't it be both? Um, as far as us traditionally watching the movie, we usually watch it in the Christmas season. Um, it's mostly a Christmas film to me because the plot is all about making Christmas happen, but it's spooky Christmas. Mm -hmm. So it fits right in with all the Christmas horror movies that I love, even though it's not gory. Uh, but why not both? You could watch it any time of year. Exactly. Yeah. So did, did you, I, I like did, it. Yeah. Did you ever hear the Frankenweenie, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and Corpse's Bride theory? Yeah, how they're all connected. I have. Yeah, that, I yeah. It, yeah. No, it was Jack. Yeah. Anything. Yeah, it was Jack, Jack is also James and the Giant Peach. Ooh. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I I would have to go with the answer of like yeah, both. Like you can say it's both. I'll concede that. But if anyone starts arguing that it's a Halloween movie, I will fight them. I will die on the hill. The first three minutes of the movie is them singing about how awesome Halloween was. Cause it's already over. Like it's like yeah. midnight November first or whatever when they're yeah. singing. Yeah, Halloween was awesome. Uh, and three hundred and sixty-five like days, sixty-four days week. until Christmas. Uh, and the whole rest of the movie is about Jack discovering Christmas, making Christmas, understanding the purpose of Christmas, and then saving Christmas. It's a Christmas movie. If you're picking one, if you gotta pick one, 
it's a Christmas movie. And it drives me nuts when all of these Halloweebs, as I like to call them, will like talk about how much they hate Christmas and yet celebrate the night before Christmas as like their God, you know, like this is their icon. And I'm just like, do you not understand that your God, Jack Skellington, spends the entire movie talking about how Halloween sucks and how <laughs> awesome Christmas is? That's the point of the film. That's I mean, yeah, I mean, I was in Walmart and they're playing Christmas music and they're playing songs from the Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm -hmm. So. Do you guys yeah. have a favorite uh, character from Nightmare Before Christmas? Hmm. Given that I like the song so much, um, it's what's this, the boogie guy, that like the stuff guy? Because I You're love that joking. song. <laughs> what's this? Yeah. That's boogie my boogie. favorite song. All right. Boogie boogie's cool. Um, let's see. Besides Jack, probably um I mean you can say Jack, Jack. it's fine. Well, I mean like Jack and uh, I mean yeah, probably Jack. Why Sally? Sally? I, love I love Sally. Sally. But then again, frog's breath. Sally. <laughs> He's pretty funny. I don't think I don't think you guys will guess mine. It's kind of niche, but here it is. Do 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 <laughs> I specifically collect the monster from the lake. I have a lot of monster from the lake stuff. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> I can say because you were talking about Christmas trees. I can say this for anybody who buys a Christmas tree from one of these places, tip the people really good. Because I worked at one of those when I was a teenager. It's a god awful job. So tip them really, really good and be really nice to them because again, it's a god awful job. That's fair advice. This is your PSA to tip your tree I have, over. I have no idea, idea, idea how many times I drop the tree or a hammer on my foot. At yeah. least twice. <laughs> so it's like, uh, so be nice to them and tip them really good. Be nice and tip your witch, uh, tree giver. <laughs> the yes. giver. It's like the giving tree giver. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's just check it out. Just Anthony's here right now. <laughs> oh, let's see. What other good Christmas ones are there? Uh, um, one of the god awful worst Christmas treats ever is. Uh, what's like that fruit, that fruit bread or whatever? That's like that hard block of bread and fruits. I love fruitcake. It's one of my favorite Christmas fruit snacks. Cake. I'm not being ironic. <laughs> I love fruitcake. <laughs> Whenever we got that, I would just like look at it, just walk away. Like, oh, hell uh, no. Oh, I prefer the milk and cookies. <laughs> Christmas cookies. Well, sure. I'm a cookie guy. Obviously, I'm not saying fruitcake is the best Christmas snack. Oh, no. I'm just saying I like fruitcake. Yeah. I've had a lot of people try it for the first time of their lives, and most of them say that wasn't that bad. That wasn't as bad as people made it out to be, which is all I feel. You know, like it's it's a bunch of candied fruit. <laughs> candied fruit is delicious. It's edible. There you go. Yeah. It's a, it's a Christmas treat. So what is your favorite Christmas treat besides fruitcake? White fudge Oreos. Ooh. No hesitation. I buy those. I eat those by the box. I still have three boxes left because that's how many I bought in November. Uh, they will be gone soon. What's up, uh, and, Kal Uh Welcome to the planet. I get it. That's like the line from Man of Steel. Yeah. Have you tried those, uh, what do they call them, space dunk Oreos yet? Yeah, Wayne really likes them. Want to talk about the flavor? <laughs> that was, it was like... Yeah, space dunk are good. Pop rocks and Oreos go together. What do you think, Echo? Well, I tried them. I'm like, oh, these are okay. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing the sound. What the hell is... Oh, I didn't know they were in there. So I'm hearing this sound come from my mouth. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Hmm, I haven't tried that yet. I'll have to get that. <laughs> it's pretty I, good. I, th I think the icing has a, it like has this weird vanilla flavor. Not weird, but for me, it doesn't work as well, but it really works for Aline. So obviously, please try them. And I'm always open to the different Oreo flavors. Just I didn't like this as much as the other ones. <laughs> they bugled. <laughs> come on, Aline. I just read I fixed video. my mistake. All right. Superman sucks. <laughs> I am divorced, so if everyone um, wants to put in their application as my new spouse. Uh, I guess on set, uh, they didn't know you were married. Well, okay, yeah, not anymore. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They were right. They were just too early. No, he knows I'll give his favorite character respect, but he's not. He's definitely not my favorite. I'm an Aquaman stan, so. And that's fine, yeah. Not saying you gotta rank Superman number one. I don't rank Superman number one. He's just in like my top five. I love him. <laughs> yeah. What was it on uh, Big Bang Theory? Like, 
Oh, Aquaman sucks. He sucks underwater. <laughs> he didn't want to be Aquaman. I've gone through so many years of people saying my favorite superhero sucks that, like, I'm over it. I'm just going to tell you if I like yours or not. The end. Yeah. I think and I liked fair. him pre-Jason Momoa, too. This is not just, well, like, hot actor yeah, yeah. syndrome. Yeah. I used to I used to not like him. Then they did that storyline where he, like, he lost his hand and had, like, the hair and shit. And it was like. Yeah, the 90s one. He's like, damn, when did Aquaman become a badass? I mean, speaking of, I don't know if uh, anyone noticed, but this is actually the Justice League shirt from that Zack Snyder, uh, like, trilogy weekend when he did a theatrical screening of all the movies. So this uh, donated a bunch of money to some suicide awareness charities. And it was also just some sick Jim Lee art of Superman and Aquaman and the whole gang. So oh, God. I had a copy of X-Men number one signed by him, by Mr. Jim Lee. And then I did a, something really dumb. I gave it away. You gave it away? You didn't even sell it? No, it's like my friend is like, hey, can I have that? Here. So, yeah, I did something really dumb. That was very dumb, yeah. I wouldn't even do that for someone I was trying to have sex with. <laughs> like, <that> was... <laughs> like I, I can't understand why you would do that. I and wouldn't only... do that if it wasn't signed. And, and not only that, because it was two versions, I believe, uh, multiple versions of that particular uh, issue, number one. It was Is it the, the one, one that had like the five, the poster, the yeah, that version of it signed by him, mm. and I gave it away. He was like, uh, mm. "I was stupid." Damn. Well, live and learn. So the next time you get an X Men number one signed by Jim Lee, uh, don't give that one away. <laughs> I'll put it. In, I'll put it in a picture frame or something. Like, hey, look what I have. Yeah. They had uh speaking of X-Men, um, I did you see they had the trailer for the X-Men 97 on Disney Plus? I did. Um, I don't know what to think yet because you know I liked the X-Men cartoon as a kid. Yeah, but I've never been a big Marvel guy specifically. Even when I was younger, I liked DC a little bit more. And Disney's quality hasn't been up to snuff. And I'm just saying that generally. I'm not being like, oh, MCU phase four only sucks. Like now, yeah. like I, the park stuff hasn't been as good. A lot of the shows hasn't been as good. The move other movies. So mm -hmm. I'm not optimistic. I'm going to give it a shot. I give everything a shot. Yeah. I'm not some, you know, red pill yeah. incel nerd about any of this stuff, but mm -hmm. I, I can't get excited for it just because it's like, Oh, it's another Disney plus show. And I don't mm -hmm. like almost every Disney plus show. So we'll see. It's like, maybe well, the, 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 the animation's kind of the same as it was, mm -hmm. but like, if you look closely at it, you can see no. They took Rogue's ass. <laughs> what have they done to us? Just kidding. She does have an ass in most of the shots at the original show as well. It's just how dare, but... how dare they? <laughs> uh, and then they cut Storm's hair. Look kind of weird. I was like, yeah. well, no, they're going for with her like her punk rocker look almost, where she had like that mohawk or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I think that Jean Grey is going to turn out to be the Goblin Queen because she's pregnant in the trailer, and there's already a Goblin Queen action figure. So we'll see if that is correct. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert! Yep, yeah, they finish it with the <laughs> toys. Always come out first, and yeah. I'm a Transformers fan, so I'm used to that with the movies. That's mm -hmm. when I immediately bought my tickets for Revenge of the Fallen because I saw the toy for Jet Prime. I'm just like, oh, okay, I'm going to see this opening night now. So it's like, thank you, toys. <laughs> You're awesome. It's like it's the biggest surprise. It's like, yeah, we got the biggest surprise of the movie. And then you see the toy line, son of a bitch! <laughs> like, how dare you? You gotta avoid it. If you're a toy, it's rough for a toy collector because either you gotta avoid the toys, which means you're gonna miss out on them, <laughs> or you spoil yourself uh, when you get the toys. It, it's even worse for the, some of these uh, toy YouTubers because some of them got in trouble because what was it one of the Jurassic Park movies? They released the toys before the movie, giving stuff away. I think it's either Jurassic Park or one of the Godzilla movies. Can't remember, but they released the toys. So all these toy YouTubers are showing them off. Next thing you know, they're getting DMCA's and stuff mm -hmm. because they're like, "We don't want you to see. We don't want you showing off the toys." It's like, tell the toy company not to release them. Yeah, yeah. Give it a better street date or something. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we are collectors of fine toys. <laughs> we have many. So I feel you, like, uh, sometimes you do accidentally spoil things for yourself if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to watch out. I know some series, some movies I'm excited for because even if the movie sucks, if I get a toy line of characters I care about, like, that's awesome. I mean, I hope the movie doesn't suck. Hopefully. But, uh, but it's nice to be able to have uh, just newer and more upgraded figures and toys yeah. to come out for movies, whereas... 
some of the ways uh, action figures and things were molded, you know, decades ago have been improved upon. So now we have a lot more detail. We have a lot better paint jobs. So it's nice to see upgraded materials, even yeah. if the movie source material isn't the best. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I got I to gotta cut in here. Uh, Kal L. Daly is saying, who's more romantic uh, than Clark Kent with Lois Lane? I would argue Wally West uh, with Linda. Uh, Wally West is the best comic book husband. I love Wally. <laughs> and I love Superman and Lois, to be clear. Uh, but yeah, I would say Wally West uh, outdoes that. And uh, since you mentioned your collection there, what's your most prized possession in both your guys' collection, would you say? My wife. <laughs> um, good answer. Yeah. I mean, my family my, good answer. <laughs> my hot toy black suit Superman, which is over Aline's shoulder back there uh she convinced me into buying the two pack of uh the justice league hot toys of batman and superman because it was when amityville christmas vacation was doing very well and i shouldn't have bought them i should not have spent that money but she bullied me into doing it uh but it looks great thank you for, for dropping his head instead Ooh. of just picking it up and setting it to the side Ooh, that does look good <clears throat> hot toys are hundreds of dollars but they have like ex very specific um perfect likenesses of like the actors and the characters that they're doing i think like one of the things with the with the, the heads and stuff is now that we have face scan and stuff whereas before they just kind of had to sculpt it and some of the uh some of what they did was just like awful uh, okay well that. let's wrap this up because we have uh some prior convictions that we do have to do so i just want to say one last time you know thanks for having us on it does mean a lot to me steven mm -hmm. uh you know i appreciate trying to give us a shout out echo always good talking to you sure. once again please if you're into the idea of a comedy horror parody of you know christmas rom-coms consider supporting the campaign for curtains for christmas you know if, even if it's just a dvd or a blu-ray but we got the higher things of like the special thanks and the executive producer credits and like the props and what have you uh, you know, take a look at it. Watch the teaser trailer. That's the tone we're going for. You know, we are taking the piss out of the rom-com genre, but from a place of love. Like, again, I love this genre. We love watching these. So we aren't insulting the genre. We're just poking fun at the genre while also having a bunch of carnage. We are. We only have five days left of the campaign. We got to make like five thousand dollars i think we can do it but we need to get there you know we need more help tell your friends tell family whoever you think might be interested in this if everyone does a little bit even again even if it's just a dvd or blu-ray it will add up and we will get there so please consider supporting the campaign it's a really fun original script if you're one of those people that say oh there's no original movies anymore well here's a solution baby this is not a sequel this is not a remake it is an original idea i don't know if this specific thing has been done before it might have been i don't know but i don't know of any horror comedy christmas rom-com parodies so if you want something original if you've seen my films you know what you're getting yourself into it's going to be a fun live action cartoon with some brutal gore so please I can, I, yeah I can say as many as Christmas horror movies as I've seen, this idea I don't think I've come across. That's what we're hoping. We're hoping it's original enough that people will want to see it. And uh, yeah, that makes me really excited uh, for this to succeed. You guys, it, it's up to fans. It's up to you guys to help us support and, and get it off the ground. All right. Well, I'm glad you guys came on. And like I said, I'll get it out there as much as I can, too. And uh, Same we'll here. Soon, so. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. You guys have a good night. You have a good one, too. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. You have a good night. Have a good weekend. Bye. You, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got to say, it is a pretty cool idea. And I'm literally like as many as Christmas horror movies as I've seen. I'm just like, don't think I've seen anything with that like this idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and perfect title for it too. Is you know the double it works. It, it, it rolls off the tongue. Curtains for Christmas. It just <laughs> sounds <for> cool. <laughs> Curtains for Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> say that ten times by asked. I don't need to go to the hospital with a tongue twister. So no, thank you. My goodness, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, no.
Uh, but yeah, so next Saturday, I don't know what you guys want to do or if you're going to bring someone on. or what. I, I, I don't know. I've, I've been so – because this week got super busy, a lot of stuff that was going on. And so my, I know I need to – if I can find somebody, I think I need to talk to that other Steven, get a hold of him, maybe if he can find somebody because mm-hmm. I've been super busy. Mm-hmm. Hopefully this week I'm going to be kind of busy, so – yeah, I'm sure you'll pull something off there. So, yeah, talk to Steve and maybe uh, Cheetah might come on or someone else or Bones or whatever you want to do. It's all on you, so enjoy that. Yeah. I'm just going to go to Beverly, relax, and then leave the go to Texas. So You're going to be on, in Texas? Remember, stay away from that Texas chili. <laughs> well, we're going to be out far away from town and stuff, so, like, all our food's going to be there. So, so okay, this is uh, – okay, it's the uh, cheerleader movie, right? Yeah, cheerleader. Only. And then, and then, what do you got after that? Uh, same set, Axe Grinder Seven. We're doing both movies while we're there. Oh, you're doing like back to back. Yeah. So I guess maybe some will be filmed while that's being filmed. Whatever. I'm not sure how they'll work it out, but both of them will be filmed there. Yeah. So, yep, gonna be good. <laughs> and then a couple other things I'm hoping to hear back from. Nothing official yet, but we'll see. So, and also they just started a campaign for um, Death Woods, which I put in aside for that. So maybe we'll see. Death Woods would be fun. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but I know uh, Felissa Rose is in that, um, a co star from Camp Blood Nine. Well, actually, well, yeah, one from Camp Blood Nine and then future Cheerleader Elimination, Anna Clary is in it and then of course we mentioned her earlier jessa who is in everything now <laughs> like she's just around so it's just yeah it's getting her name out there which is cool so yeah I, I, she is a talent i mean i think she does some great stuff so i mean she's got the whole package looks at all talent and acting so the best of her so hopefully uh I, never- I just ordered one of her movies because like my cousin was like hey if you wear this frog hat three times i'll give you a hundred dollars so I said yes, and so I ordered a whole bunch of movies. One of them was Satan Lives: The Rise of the Illuminatis. <laughs> Just because of that name, I was like, "Wow!" Yeah, thanks, Cal. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, we gotta get a list there. Which I'll um, I gotta talk to Jess to see when she's free to come on. So, but like I said, who knows? She does a movie a month, so that that's pretty much her goal. Because I guess so she's, she's, she's yeah, she's, she's gonna. Looks like she wants to keep pretty busy, which is good for her. Oh yeah, a name out there, and people are going to know who, who who she is. So yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, she's also doing that. Um, the air fryer one, the air fryer massacre. Is it air fryer massacre? If I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. But I think we, it's we, 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 we've gone from microwave massacre to air fryer massacre. Oh god. Yep. <laughs> are there any other kitchen appliances left? Hmm. Blendo Massacre. Egg Food Beater. <laughs> Egg Beater Massacre. <laughs> Could you just imagine the guy gets his balls? Oh, God. <laughs> It'll be beating his balls. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. Oh, gosh. Uh, Egg Beater Massacre. <laughs> well, now now uh, somebody's going to come up with that, and, and you're going to be going, God damn it, that was my idea. Where's I'm like, my you cut? son of a bitch. <laughs> Well, we come up with a lot of ideas, and one of these days, probably going to see it for real and be like, Shh. "Like, oh, damn it, we should have copyrighted that." I got to stop sharing my ideas. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, oh, this damn fire alarm! I swear. What's what? They keep going off and stuff. Well, it's crazy because the batteries are out of it, but I think they might be like wired somewhere all together. So, and then I don't know if I get a battery in this one, and if they get batteries in theirs, if it'll stop or if there's still, because there's like something that's also there's like a where you would think one fire alarm would be, and it's like just wires hanging. So hopefully, I I don't know, but <laughs> I had the I had to take the batteries out of mine because I think I have to replace mine. That's in my room because it's not it's going go off. Yeah. And it's like no smoke, no it, nothing. It's, it's weird because the battery is taken out, yet it's still beeping. So I'm like, how is that possible? <laughs> we, we In Washington State, we have to have like carbon monoxide ones too. Mm-hmm. So my brother got my one, my mom one, fire alarm slash carbon monoxide one that talks. And so we test it in here and it's like, 
I asked my brother, can you change the volume? Because real low. Testing, testing. There is fire. There is fire. It's real low. So yeah, like if there is fire, <laughs> but I don't know, like when it does, like it's when, 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 it go, when it goes off, it's real low. So it's like, so if there's a fire or carbon monoxide, we're screwed because we can't hear you. That's kind of weird. Yeah, because I guess in Washington State, it's a, a law or something mm. to have the carbon monoxide in, you know, in the homes. So, yeah. Oh boy, anything else going on? Uh, I'm probably gonna head out. I think I'm getting kind of tired. I didn't sleep today much, so it's like getting up at five. It's like, I mean, I like leaving early at work, but getting up's kind of like, uh. <laughs> yeah, when you get up, it's like you're always like the body and the brain, they don't kind of always kind of start up at the same time. Yeah, I, I'm one of those. If you try to talk to me in the morning, you might get a growl. <laughs> It's like the body's awake, the brain's not. Don't talk to me. Pretty much. So, yeah, I guess, uh, like you said, Echo will figure out what the deal is next week while I'm out of town. And uh, thanks, Anthony and Kal-El, for stopping by, everyone who's watching the replay. And definitely, if you can, even if it's just a little bit, if um, you know, do you get a special thanks or whatever, check out that Kickstarter. And yep. uh, definitely support that because it's going to be a good one if you know his work. So. Hey, it's a, hey, his uh, Amityville Christmas vacation, I, and he won. won he won. Yeah, yeah so okay. yeah, so, what twenty twenty three best Amityville movies, Chainsaw Awards. So, so it's going to be another winner for sure, in my oh, opinion. Yeah. So. so, all right, have a good night. See, well, I'll see you the week after, but <laughs> anyway, have a good one. <laughs> Bye.